Hi everyone! I decided to make this spur of the moment video answering questions, everything you want to know about traveling abroad for the first time. I'm online right now and I'm planning my trip to Israel and I started having flashbacks of my first time planning my trip out of the country and that was just a few years ago. So I think I am a really good person to answer lots of questions because I was in your position. If you're watching this video because you're looking for information, like what do I do, what's it gonna be like, and you have this question and that question, all these questions are still fresh in my mind and now I have the answers. So not only will I answer your questions, I'll tell you some of my experiences also. So there's a lot of things that you have to do when you're planning a trip out of the country for the first time. First, I wanna say, I hope you're excited and not nervous. Do not be nervous. If you are planning a trip out of the country for the first time, you are so fortunate. This is such an opportunity. This is a great adventure. That's how I thought of it. I was too excited to be nervous. No way. I was going to enjoy every last minute. I even remember people telling me, oh my God, that's going to be a long plane ride. You're going to be on the plane for 18 hours. You need to take something to put you to sleep. It's like, first of all, I don't take anything to put myself to sleep. Second of all, I want to experience everything. I, You're not going to believe this. I didn't sleep on the plane. I was on the plane for 18 hours. Both trips, I was up a total of 24 hours. I was too hyped to sleep. I was too excited. There was a few times I did try to sleep on the plane, um, on the long flight, the 14 hour flight, because I took three planes to Japan, three planes back, and one of the planes was a long 14 hour ride. And I did try to sleep, I just couldn't. I relaxed, I enjoyed myself, but I just couldn't sleep. Okay, first of all, I don't even know where I am, I'm all over the place, but don't be nervous, be excited that you're traveling out of the country, it's an amazing opportunity. First things first, if you haven't obtained your passport yet, for those of you who do not have a passport, you obtain a passport at the post office. So a lot of people think that you apply for your passport at like the DMV or what we call here in Michigan, the Secretary of State, but you actually apply at the post office. It's about $150. You need to call the post office because there's certain hours that they do that. Um, you can get all the information on the post office website, easy as can be. I, I believe it cost $150 and I think I got it four weeks later. Give yourself six to eight weeks. Don't push it. So don't make it tight. But let's see, what is the next thing? Okay, this is why I'm on the kayak website. So both times that I went to Japan, I searched for two months. I did not buy my ticket until I searched for two months for the best flights, the best flight prices, and the best hotel prices. And you can do that all here on Kayak. So after searching for two months straight on every single website you can imagine, I came back to Kayak again and again. So the prices vary drastically day by day. That's why it took me two months because every time I would get online, like I would search prices like one day, then I would get online and search again the next day. The prices would tra change drastically. So I was afraid that if I bought the ticket, it was going to be drastically cheaper the next day. And also when you're planning your trip, like I'm just playing around with the dates right now, but I'm thinking April. So even if I change the date by one day and go April 5th instead of April 4th, the price will change drastically. So what do you think a round trip ticket to Israel would cost? I'm in Michigan. Let's see. And my computer's really, really slow today. And I'm on my phone looking for some answers to answer some questions. Okay. Okay. So, the it was April 
4th to April 13th. And the price is $8.92. So yesterday it was $9.50 something. It was $9.50 or something like that. So this is typical of what I've been seeing. So let's just change it so you can see what I mean. Change the date up here. They changed the website since last year, so it's different. I was a pro on this website. Now I can't even navigate through it. Okay, um, let's say I want to go March 14th, and I want to return the 24th, because I typically always stay like 10 days to 2 weeks. What was that price before? Eight something? So I changed it by a couple weeks. I don't think it's done loading yet. Okay. See what I mean? It's drastic. When I was doing it, when I was planning my trip to Japan, it would actually change by thousands. Like I changed it from like January to April or something. And it was a $2,000 difference. But anyway, make sure you plan your trip. Take time to plan it to get the best price and the best seats. And so look at how many hours you're going to be on the plane. And so that's the second thing. First thing, you get the passport. Second thing, find an amazing price. Third thing, when you find the airline you're going to fly with, you can sometimes pick your seat online. So I flew with American Airlines the first time, and if I'm going to be on the plane for 18 hours, I wanted an amazing seat. I wanted first class. I wanted business class, but my budget didn't allow it. So the next best thing is exit row seating. And exit row seating is so amazing. I took pictures to, for anybody who didn't know, because you would not believe some people who do not know what exit row seating is. So exit row seating is there is absolutely nobody in front of you whatsoever. You're literally in the exit row. If something should happen, you're by the exit door, the exit window. And you just have to answer a few questions if you know how the exit door works and things like that. Or you can't sit there. If you don't know how it works, just say, no, I don't, but can you show me? And they will show you what to do. So I took pictures, and it's just pictures of my feet showing everybody how much room I had. So I'll show you the first picture. Forgive these shoes. My son took me hiking in Japan, and these were new shoes when I got there, and look what happened. And if he's watching this video, he's going to remember that day because I had a heart attack. And he was like, what did you think was going to happen? Did you think you were going to stay clean? Anyway. I wonder if he's going to watch this video. So this is exit row. Do you see how there's nobody in front of me? Here's a guy right there in his slippers being all comfortable. Here's the bathroom right here. So if I have to go to the bathroom 22 times, I'm not bothering anybody. And there's another picture too. These are all different flights, but on all my flights, I had three flights there, three flights back, all exit row seating. American Airlines will give you free um, will give you the seat at no extra charge. Some other airlines charge you, like um, Canada Air charged me $115. And here is me. This is my coat in my lap. And right here, I'm in the exit row area. And there's three seats right here. There's me by the window. There's a middle seat. Nobody's sitting there. And then there's some guy, some nice guy, sat next to me right there. And there's the bathroom right where that guy's walking. And do you see this area right here? This is where the flight attendant goes and she starts preparing like the meals and like she puts trays and there's food and there's snacks and there's drinks there. So all of us periodically, not all of us, a few of us periodically would get up right here and stand and chit chat to stretch our legs and we can get juice and snacks and stuff like that. So it was pretty comfortable for us to be in exit row seat, then everybody standing here and, and talking, just, you know, to pass the time of the flight. And here's me on another flight, exit row seat. Do you see there's nobody in front of me? There's the bathroom right there. There's the middle area where everybody stands to talk and 
behind this wall right here is a bunch of juice and pop and snacks. It is for anybody. Oh, basically, I forgot to mention American Airlines. I actually love that airline. They give you so much food and so many drinks. There's no way that you could possibly even eat it all. So they give you like, you know, free wine, free champagne if you drink, um, all kinds of free meals and free snacks. Even their snacks are meals. So it's just weird. So they would keep coming by again and again. And I'd be like, no, thank you. No, thank you. The reason why I remember that specifically, because when I flew on Canada Air, they starved me to death. Nothing. The food was literally not edible. There was numerous reasons why I cannot stand that airline. I'm not even going to go there. But anyway, back to planning a nice trip. So um, you can get the exit row seat. If, it, if you can't afford business class or first class, pay the extra $115 if it's not free for exit row. So that is what I recommend. And let's see what else I can tell you. Once you pick your flight, once you pick your flight, um, go to the go to the airline's website and you can actually get all their information like how much your bags weigh should weigh and all the information on what you could do. You could print out your itinerary. Um, what else can you do? You need to call your credit card companies and your bank and let them know that you're traveling abroad so your credit cards work. And you need to exchange your money. You can exchange your money at the bank. Okay, this is very important. Before you go on a trip to a foreign country, give yourself about two weeks prior and call your bank. Tell them. I need so and so much money and I'm leaving for Japan so and so like you need yen or whatever and you can exchange your money at the bank and they will give you cash and you could do it right there because if you do it in the airport it's gonna cost you a lot it's gonna cost you there's fees and everything it's ridiculous and I didn't give myself enough time either time to um, exchange my money at bank so what did we go over so far Passport, cheap tickets, your seat is very, very important. Call your bank, call your credit card companies. Make sure you have cash when you're in the when you're in another country because you know how we are in the United States, only plastic. I I do not see cash for literally months at a time. I don't use cash at all ever. If I buy a pack of gum, it's with my card. If I buy gas, it's with my card. In Japan, they only use cash. In a lot of the countries, they only use cash. You can use a credit card. I did use a credit card over there, but you won't believe this. A lot of them don't know how to actually work it or work the credit card machine or how to enter it or something because it's not common there like it is here. So you would think Japan being more advanced than we are would be, you know, using plastic, but they don't just cash so I had lots of cash and I think okay what other questions did I have let me tell you my experiences I was worried about getting lost in the airport did I get lost in the airport yep I did okay Detroit Metro Airport is what I fly out of it is nothing it looks like a tiny candy store compared to the airports in Japan let's talk about Narita Airport in Japan it's so big, get from terminal to terminal, you have to take a 10 minute bus ride. So the first time I didn't know about the bus ride and I was walking back and forth, getting late, almost missing my plane, asking so many people, because in Japan they can't speak enough English to help you. So I would ask, you know, and I would point to my ticket. You have to learn some, ba oh, I'm gonna be all over the place. You have to learn some basic native language, it's a must. It at least shows them that you're trying, like learn how to say, excuse me. That is the number one word I would say try to learn. In Japan, um, they understand English, but not that much. So anyway, I was asking people, you know, where do I go? I was showing them my ticket. Finally, I asked three people. And the fourth person I asked, he was a Japanese police officer. And he told me to go back the other way that I just came from. 
And I was like, can you just take me? Because I wasn't sure what they were saying, if I was even following directions. And he kind of laughed and he walked me 15 minutes to my destination. So that was really good. So learn some basic language, like in Japanese, just excuse me, is sumimasen. So, you know, a lot of times when I didn't know anything, when I needed directions, when I needed something in the store, I would first politely say sumimasen, and then I would pull up the picture on my phone and point to it. Then they would be able to help me. Like, um, I went hiking and I lost my sunglasses. So I sat down and I rested and I got back up and I forgot to put my sunglasses on. So the next day I had to go to the store and get some sunglasses and I couldn't find them. So I was back and forth throughout the store. So I pulled up a pair of sunglasses on my phone with a picture. So I saw a lady who worked there and I just said, Sumimisen, and I showed her my phone and she knew it in English. She was like, oh, I got um, sunglasses. So, you know, learn some basic language some basic words in the native language um like for instance good morning in japanese just you know it's ohio gozaimasu and so i know some basic words enough to make myself sound polite so that's all you need to do um i don't think there's anything to actually worry about the airports are easy to navigate through don't be afraid to ask questions everybody that i ask anything was so above and beyond helpful. I can't even explain how helpful and nice people are. So I wouldn't worry. I would just um, be so excited for my trip. And I know there's a lot of other things that I could be telling you, but even though I do have all the answers, I can't think of the questions right now. So whatever you want to know about traveling abroad for the first time, if you have a specific question, please leave it for me. I'm so excited that I'm going to Israel, and if you're traveling for the first time, I'm literally so excited for you. I encourage everybody to travel outside of the country. I'm trying to get my sister Melinda to travel outside of the country, and I think she will. It's just going to take a little bit of persuasion and, you know, showing her the prices, that it's not outrageous, and I think she will. I wonder where she's going to go for the first time. I don't know, but... I get so excited about traveling. I'm literally excited for other people the first time they travel. That's how amazing it is. When I'm in Japan, for the last couple times that I was there, it's even surreal. It's like, I'm there, but I can't believe I'm there. You know what? It's one thing to travel to another country where they speak English. Like, for instance, I'm in the U.S. I can go to Canada, and I won't even feel like I'm out of the U.S. When you go to a country literally across the world that does not speak English, you're in a surreal moment. You're in a surreal, I can't even describe it. It's just like, literally, am I really here? Is this a dream? But it's so amazing. I have so many pictures. I post random videos. If you look through all my videos, there's going to be videos of Japan and videos of me going to Monkey Mountain where I went to this one place and there's literally 700 monkeys all around us. And it's just a different world. And I'm just so excited. And this video is mainly about me being excited to go to Israel. I'm not sure how much I helped anybody. But if you have any questions at all, please leave me a comment. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I really appreciate all my subscribers. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.